So the topic of this video is going to be entirely about private auras. Technical explanation of what they actually do and what they don't do. So to start, private auras is the system that Blizzard added to the game to where they can flag certain debuffs as not loggable by any means for add-ons or weak auras to detect them. And the intent was they wanted players to solve these particular mechanics without a weak or auto solving them. And players are always very creative. They come up with a lot of work workarounds that still defeat the private aura intent. In fact, I'm gonna tell you a small story is when they first introduced the mechanic, I produced an entire list sent to Blizzard saying, these are the ways people are gonna work around weak or uh, not weak auras, private auras. And I'm gonna try to re I don't have the I try to pull the list up in my email, I can't find it anymore. So I'm gonna try to recite it off memory. It's like number one, they're gonna try to scan threats. That's a that's a timed classic that's been used since Sinestra. Sinestra has no debuff for those orbs that are chasing players around, but they do have threat tables. I was like, you need to make the threat table on a private aura hidden, or the private aura is useless. Number two. You can't have a raid boss whisper on a private aura, or Anna's just going to scan that and use syncing to, to uh, disseminate the information in the group, again, defeating the private aura. Number three. You can't uh, allow macros in combat, or you have to restrict them in some way, or what's to stop players from just creating a macro and pushing it when they get the debuff to, again, disseminate information to the raid, and still have the weak aura solve it for them, regardless of the aura being private or not. And then I got even to more technical things, like number four, I was like, if the debuff initial application does damage, well now you have things like uh, health snapshotting. You can snapshot the health before a debuff goes out on the entire raid and after, and see who took damage. Now you know who the private now you know who the private auras are on. That's simple. And it's like, what if it doesn't do damage? What if it causes loss of control? Ah, but there's a loss of control API. If the player is slowed in any way, check unit speed. M or missing armor? Check unit armor. Are they CC'd like a sheep or something? Check the loss of control API. You know, I got I came up with a big list of creative solutions around private auras, and I sent it to them many months before they ever implemented any private auras in the first raid that had them. They didn't fix any of these, and they were and more than half of them were exploited. Like for example, Smolderon had the fixate mechanic with the orbs threat table. I warned them about it six months before they put that boss out. Didn't fix it. Not my fault. I tried. I said players are creative. They'll do it if you let them. And they did. So, to answer the question, are private war ours working? Not in the least. They're literally not working at all. They might as well not exist at this point unless they either fully lock it down or just give up. Because this middle ground is not working. Players are still working around private auras if they're annoying enough. The only time they don't bother is if the mechanic is inconsequential enough that it doesn't worth the time to bother. Like the soaks on a uh, bull across private aura. But the mechanic doesn't matter. It's incidental. You kind of casually do the soaks, you know, because it's just right next to you. It's like, oh, flame circle. I'll just move two yards to my left and stand in it. You don't need a weak R to solve that. So no one's trying to work around the private R because there's no need to. As long as there's no need to work around it, it doesn't matter if it's private or not. It's inconsequential. But if there is a need to work around it, then they work around it. And again, it's still inconsequential. So it's in inconsequential either way. So 61 private R's in the game, 61 useless private R's in the game. I get the intent. I agree with the intent. 
That's why I sent him an email telling him, if this is your intent, here's what you got to do. But uh, some of the stuff is hard to do, mind you. Making sure the threat table is not possible. Easy fix. And I did hot fix it when players finally noticed it. It actually took players longer to notice it than I thought it would because, you know, you know, I've been making mods since uh, Wrath of the Ledge King, so of course I remember all these workarounds. I remember Sinestra orbs. So my front line of thinking was like, check the threat table immediately. Check the threat table. You know, but you know, some of these newer coders, maybe they didn't rem don't remember that, you know? <laughs> That's the benefits of, you know, doing this a long time is I know my shit. So if I give you a uh, sound advice, it pays to listen sometimes. But anyways, private auras, what they're supposed to do is prevent you from knowing the mechanic is happening and make you solid with your eyeballs and your communication. But uh, one thing Blizzard hasn't quite pivoted to yet is uh, metagaming. Players will always choose the path of most efficiency, period. If there's a way to do it easier, they will do it. They might not even like doing it, but they'll do it anyway. Because that's the way people game. Like, and this is something Blizzard hasn't quite accepted yet. Like, uh, in general, when they design something, if there's a degen way to do it, and it can be the most unfun thing in the world, compared to something that's like astronomical fun, like, there could be a game mechanic to where uh, you could do something in uh, 10 minutes an absolutely awful, terrible, unfun way or take 20 minutes and have the time of your life. Players will do the 10-minute way because it's faster. They don't care if they have fun this way and they hate, hate, hate doing it this way. They're going to do it this way because that's the most efficient way to do it. Because if, if you're doing it this way, you're wrong. That's how metagaming works, you know, that mentality. I think that me mentality is awful and it ruins the game. This is something Blizzard has had trouble pivoting to. And it's the same with these private auras. They haven't quite pivoted to the fact that players, they're going to macro it. Or they're going to find some clever way around it. The second it becomes an inconvenience not to. The private power is inconsequential. Yeah, they don't care. But at that point, why does it matter if it's private anyway? It's not like it changed anything. The mechanic was inconsequential, so you didn't add any value to it making it private. But like, Seeking Inferno, the one I'm talking about, this one, the Smolderon mechanic. Everyone's using a macro. I, will, I can't find you a single mythic guild that's not you macroing this and pushing the macro when they go out. And having it auto assign the orb uh, soak order. The, the idea Blizzard had was cue your mic, talk about it. Nope. Everybody hit your macro. God damn it, we wiped again. Who didn't hit their macro? You know what I'm talking about. If you've done this boss in Mythic, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's. The first 10 wipes this boss is getting everyone in their macro right because somebody didn't copy and paste it right. The next 10 wipes is everyone has to get the, have it happen at least once before they remember they got hit their macro. It's not fun. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. You know... I get Blizzard's intent, but... Player behavior? is not going to change. They are unbending. Why do I th if they want private hours to work, they do have to lock down more things. And when it comes to locking down more things, one of the hardest things to lock down is macros because as soon as you lock them down, you break a lot of... There's a lot of collateral damage and that's where the problem comes in. They could simply go, yeah, you can no longer send uh, macros in combat against raid bosses. They have the technology to scope it where they can make the restriction very specific. They could be like, it's only restricted if it's a raid boss and only on mythic difficulty or something like that. 
or heroic or an above or something. And it would still suck because there's a lot of macros out there that exist that aren't game breaking or trying to get around private ROs that would be suffer for it. Now in more within they're actually doing some restrictions to macros. Which I won't get into too too in depth because you know there's no reason they're doing it. And it's not live yet, so I'm not gonna discuss it. But they're locking down macros somewhat in the war within. But they're not stop it's not gonna stop uh private aura macros. Now one suggestion I had was uh they just have to disable specific functions in macros, which would also Again, it would break a couple normal macros, but not nearly as uh, helpful ones. In fact, they would probably, I'd actually be happy if they broke it. Is they need to disable uh, send add on message and send chat message from uh, being in macros. And the reason being, those are the two ways, the two, the two easiest ways to communicate to other players via that macro. You can't sync and you can't do a say then uh, it's not as easy to parse on the other end. And of course, there's still ways to work around it. So then it's going to be a cat and mouse still. Like, they break that, players would just put different Lua in their code. And then it's like, oh, well, we'll just disable Lua in macros. Yeah, but then you just broke a lot of combat, combat macros that weren't doing anything harmful. So yeah, it's one of those things where you can't really fix it. Which is it goes down, it comes down to what people keep saying, just abolish private ma private auras are not working. Find another way. You know, in my video I did recently, and I'll actually link it at the end of this video, in case you haven't seen it, about solving the add-on problem with Vow, and it just goes back to just recognize the way gamers play, and give them the tools they need to do it, built in. You don't want them to be need an add-on to do it. And just make it real good so it works out the add-on. And they've done one thing already that's been improved. Improving visuals has been a huge help. Especially in the raids. In dungeons, not quite so much because they're not really doing it enough there yet. Dungeons still suck. Because even if the visuals are okay, they're failing to account for uh, narrow hallways, terrible camera angles, piles of nameplates, a bunch of melee spell effects all over the place and even these good visuals you still can't see what the fuck's going on when you're pulling three trash packs at once and four of the mobs all in front all going out at the same time and all your melee are dead because they didn't see the frontals due to all this visual noise you know that's something they gotta figure out still because that add-ons are still required there just so they can see this, not necessarily see it, but hear it. They need to see the, have the weak R or DBM going frontal. Because you can't see it. That's what needs to be, that's what they should be focusing on. That's what they need to be fixing. This is a waste of time. And I'm going to talk about the technical part of uh, private ROs. Just because, you know, people care about that. Private ROs do have an API where add-ons can register sounds to them. And that's what DBM does. You could register a sound to a private aura, which I do... Where is that at? Am I blind? Yeah, it's right here. Add private aura sound option. That's my own API for it. I'll go to core here. And the function that fires on pull is enable the private aura, which is here. And then I go down, you'll be able to see the blizzard function that actually enables it. C unit auras, add private aura applied sound. That's the actual blizzard function. As you can see there, it lets you attach a sound ID to a private aura by the private aura ID. Then what happens is blizzard actually plays a sound file when you get that private aura. And it can be any sound file that the add-on wants. So like DBM, big wigs, weak auras, they can put a sound on a, a private aura so you get a sound alert. No text, no flashing, 
No computational solving, just the sound. The computational solving will come from that macro you're pushing. Which goes back to the whole rant I just had. Anyway, this is the, this is the only thing that really API-wise, you're supposed to be able to do with private ROs. What players are doing is a different story, but this is all Blizzard wanted you to be able to do. Is add a sound to it and nothing else. So far, they're still doubling down and going into the war within. In fact, they're they're not going as hard in a raid. Like the, the probably the one mechanic that I saw immediately, players are like, "That's gonna need a macro, Blizzard. Just don't make it private." I'm telling you now, Blizzard, if you put that private, we will make a macro for it. This is what Top Guild told Blizzard. They actually listened. They actually was like, you know what? That spell's not private anymore. Then they flagged a few different spells private instead. In the, the ones that are more inconsequential. But... Where was my train of thought there? Oh yeah, and War Within... They're doubling down in other places. They're now adding private auras in dungeons for the first time. For, uh, up until now, it's been raids only. But there's several dungeon bosses that now have private auras. That's going to have an interesting effect on Mythic Plus because there's so, some of the Mythic Plus players have had come to private aura before. Now, so far, I haven't seen any that are hard enough that are going to require a macro. But it's going to be interesting to see how players react to seeing it in dungeons for the first time. But anyway, that's all I have to say, say about that, that topic. Very disorganized, you know, no planning, full YOLO. But, you know, the thought came into my head, it's like, well, do people really understand what private R's are doing? Do they know whether or not they're working? Et cetera, et cetera. So I hope I explain that all in my usual ranty way. And thank you for watching.